We are here to talk about a virtual reality lab, or VR lab for short, that enables us to do modeling simulation in immersive and augmented reality, but also uh, enables us with the different modalities of human system interaction. When it comes to visualization, we have four 3D projectors and kind of square feet of 180 curved screen coupled with OptiTrack cameras that can track multiple objects simultaneously in 3D space. We also have force feedback devices that enables us to touch and get a feel for something that's only on a screen, only virtual. We can feel the shape or texture of some object that only exists in software. We also have a capability of tracking human thoughts by different EEG devices we can drive a robot remotely, wirelessly, we are thought alone. And this environment we created using a Unity a gaming engine. And we have uh, created a hazardous environment. You can see uh, some uh, virtual walls and hazardous uh, material inside the, this virtual environment. And the robot will interact with that hazardous environment. What we have is a real world robot that drives around and interacts with virtual objects. It's able to do that because of the tracking, uh, and when you interact with those objects, you're actually able to feel the robot itself hitting those objects due to the haptic feedback that the Falcon offers. This is useful in times of training or uh, interacting with things from far away. So you're able to interact with something that has been previously touched by a master or someone, and they're able to say, hey, this is how you do it, but you're going off the mark, you might want to come back on the mark. The demonstration that uh, you can see behind me is a self-organizing map. It's a 3D version of it. It's a data mining algorithm where we can find patterns and uh, uh, knowledge from data. So the good thing about this is we can visualize the data in a 3D uh, format and we can go into the data and mine the relationships that exist in data. The idea started with trying to simulate driving environment of heavy vehicles. And that was a project with Idaho National Laboratory, uh, which is part of the Department of Energy. We used, like in many other applications, different techniques of machine learning and artificial intelligence to train drivers to improve their fuel efficiency. This approach, coupled with specific neural network and machine training algorithms, enabled us to achieve fuel efficiency that ranges from 5 to 15 percent. The main feature of this is the speedometer that you can see, uh, the smart speedometer, where it shows the optimal velocity uh, where you should be when you're driving in a certain terrain. It uses machine learning techniques to figure out that optimal velocity, and we train drivers to follow that uh, velocity profile throughout the, uh, that fixed route that we are training them on. And their goal is to make that pie wedge as small as possible when they're driving. One of the areas that we are working on is improving human-machine interface. The objective is to allow an operator uh, to program an industrial robot using demonstrations. To perform programming by demonstration, so the idea is that everybody can program a, a manipulator. The human only has to demonstrate an action and the robot will perform it, just based on the demonstration. Combining these techniques all together, we were able to assist with developing of applications such as remote welding of nuclear waste within a nuclear reactor. But we are also considering applications of training individuals with autism, deal with everyday situations.